last week, I had Anna Lee, who is a very dear friend and has been with us for, I don't know how many years. 10 years, 11 years. We've really watched you grow up, seriously. And such an amazing woman of God. And she came up to me and shared something that she was experiencing after the message last week. So I asked if she'd be willing to share it, and it's very vulnerable. It's a testimony that's very personal to her, but I think that it will encourage you in your faith. So if you'll come on up and share what, what you experienced last week. So yes, I, um, last Thursday, the Thursday before she started talking about listening to God's voice, uh, I woke up one uh, Thursday night at some point, my kids one of my, well, I hear my, a kid crying, like one of those cry out, mama, and I jump up and I run over because it's like, what's going on? And I look in all of their beds and they're all fast asleep. So I go back and um, a few hours later, a couple hours later, uh, the same thing happened. And I jump up and I run over and they're still fast asleep. And the same thing happened the next two nights. Um, and Saturday night after the last time, one of them have called out. I went back to bed and I had an amazing dream. And um, before I want to share that dream, I just want to let you in on some of my background. Um, my, my dad passed away when I was six years old in a car accident. And um, my mom passed when I was 20 of cancer. Since my mom had passed away, my grandmother kind of stepped up and fill in that motherly role. And my sister and I became really, really close to her. Um, she is, she's now in her late 80s and recently started talking to us about what would happen after she passed on. Uh, it was really hard for me and my sister, I think, in a sense, too, to talk about these things. Um, so I tried not to think about it too often, but there was constant reminders of this. And every time the phone would ring or I would get a message, I would just like start shaking and I have this fear, this is it, this is the phone call. And, um, but I know, I know the God, that God knows our, our hearts and he knows what we fear. And um, coming back to my dream was that I was, I haven't dreamt of my mom since she passed on, except for one time that she was there and the presence was there and I heard her voice, but this time she was, in my dream, she was there and she was fully there. I conversed with her, I saw her, I felt her, I heard her. Um, she was on a phone call, unfortunately, and the phone call that she had received was that my grandma had passed away. Sorry, now most of what I have, what I wanna share with you, I experienced in the message that Lisa brought to us last week and um, talking about the Lord's voice. I have not needed to prepare for any of my loved ones passing in such a way that I'm doing with my grandma because my mom and my dad passed away very suddenly um, and unexpectedly. Um, I woke up drenched <laughs> in, in sweat that night from that dream. And um, I knew whether it was my kids or the Lord's voice calling me that night, those nights, I knew that he was trying to draw me closer to him to try and tell me something, to try and get me. So after um, the service last Sunday, I spoke with Lisa. We had a wonderful moment. <laughs> the Lord was still revealing stuff for me then. I went home. I wrote everything down as I'm writing. I feel like the Lord's talking to me in my heart, and I'm writing stuff that I'm like, is this me? I didn't know this was even possible. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I've heard God's voice so clearly. Um, and then I just, I just realized that in the dream, my mom there stood for God's unconditional love for us. 
his support that he has for us. And um, just being there, I knew I had the support in times of sorrow like this. Um, but I also felt like the phone call for my, of my grandma passing was God saying, do not fear. I had this fear in me for so long now, like not wanting that phone call to, to come. And um, just he didn't give us a spirit or a gift of fear. And for me, that fear was losing someone that I so dearly love again was just unbearable. It was, it was controlling my every day, my every move. Um, but then I knew he came and he spoke, didn't just speak through the dream, he also spoke through the message of Pastor Lisa. And, and in his voice that night, which I believe was him calling me to him and saying to me that all will be okay, all is okay, and he is there. giving it to you again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna Lee. And God is so good that way. And last week we talked about Samuel and Eli and how he heard a voice calling him in the night three times, remember? And he went to Eli and woke him up and said, did you call me, Master? And each time he said, no, but next time you hear that, say, here I am, Lord, and listen. And so Annalie was talking to me about her dream and, and what had happened even with the calling of her in the night. And she said, I wish I would have stopped to ask God what he was saying and realized it was him. And I was like, it's not too late. <laughs> There's not really a lot of rules like that with God. He's always available. He doesn't just like, oh, you missed it. Too bad for you. You're going to have to figure it out on your own, right? He's so good and loving, and he's wanting to communicate with us. And so he's very patient, and he'll have a whole message prepared for Anna Lee to hear about Samuel and Eli, and then going into how it relates to her so that she understands. You know, the voice of God is so natural when we are believers because he is in us. He's not somewhere out there, and then he's like, Hello, anybody hear me? You know, he wants to speak to you. So when you hear his voice, it's so familiar. You think it's your children calling you or you think it's Eli in the other room calling you. And so we learn to hear his voice. We hear him as John 10 says, and we know him and we follow and obey him as our shepherd. Amen? Amen. Let's paraphrase, you're welcome. So last week I had so much material, so many lists. I still have so many. I'm gonna put them all online and I'm gonna skip two. So I'm just gonna give you the meat and the bones today and you're gonna learn some things hopefully that will help you in your relationship with God. It will grow your intimacy with the Lord and teach you how to hear his voice, how to position yourself to hear God. This is not a formula that, you know, just... Only one way works. God works in so many ways, but we have, we have a pattern that Jesus gave us, that he gave in Matthew, and I'll be sharing that. So let's bow our heads as we begin, because it's so important that you have your hearts, your minds, and your ears open. Father, thank you so much that you've given us your word, and that Jesus is the word, that he came and dwelled among, amongst us. And so today, we lay down all of our other thoughts, everything that we have going on in our lives. We ask that you would open our eyes, our ears, and our spirit to hear you and understand this and be changed by it and walk in new relationship with you, God, in a new depth and new intimacy to hear you and know you and follow you in all of your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Are you ready? Okay, let's turn in our Bibles to Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. And this is when Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So growing up, I grew up in Youth of the Mission and YWAM is how, what we call it. And YWAM is some, somewhere, it's a place, there's such a unique culture on every base, it's different. And they're all over the world. And so as a kid, I was involved in something called King's Kids. We sang, we danced, we traveled, we ministered. But everyone was a missionary, not just the parents who dragged their kids along. So the kids were missionaries too. And so some of us would, would participate in ways that were King's Kids. And thank God it was VHS recordings back then. I don't think there's anything available for you to find online. So just don't even try, because that is not a good idea. <laughs> My hair, I would perm it and then straighten it. Let's think about that for a minute. That's what we call frizz on Lisa's head. So those were the days I learned. But one thing that I did learn in YWAM that was so valuable that I carry with me and has shaped me really in my relationship with the Lord. And that is that um, Joy Dawson was one of the speakers and she would speak on the fear of God. And that, my goodness, would just burn right into your soul and you were changed by it. The other thing she would speak on was hearing God's voice. And so I was very influenced by that message. Just as a kid, I was in eighth grade. And it, it moved me, it changed me. We practiced this every time that we would go and perform or minister, we, and we traveled and we went all over doing these things. And so before every performance, we would go through this, uh, this what you're gonna learn today. And I have also adapted my own version because as we learn and grow, we have our own relationship with Jesus and we hear differently, we learn from different people. Another person that I learned from on hearing God's voice was Larry Lee back in the day. I don't know if any of you remember him, but he also spoke and he took the, the words that I just read from Matthew 6 and broke it down in a very practical way of how to hear God's voice. Thirdly, the one who has influenced me most in my life spiritually and most in my life in general in every single way is Pastor Bill, my husband. And we've been together for 32 years, married 30, but dating before that. And really to watch a man who prays in a, in a lifestyle of prayer and lives a life with absolute integrity, and I have watched it. I have lived it and experienced it and lives with so much grace. Like, it's like a gift of grace. And so I want to honor him today. I want to say thank you for walking in purity and not falling and not giving up. If you will please stand and look at all of these people and I wanna honor you today. You know, we see the inside of, of a life of a minister, and the Bible says to give double honor to those who preach. And I'm not talking about me. Could you just double honor me? <laughs> well, you did for him, do it twice for me. <laughs> I am talking about the one who leads this ministry, who has given his life for this, for what you experience every week. It is not easy but it is a huge honor and blessing. So thank you for that. And continue to pray for our pastor and our leadership team. Pray for strength. Pray for new revelation that the word of God is alive and well in all of us and that we can have that energy and joy of our salvation every, every, every day. Amen? So here's what we do. We go through Matthew 6. We start with the first verse of this, the Lord's Prayer, in verse nine, it says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, that is not hard. How do we do this? What do we, how do we start to pray? We acknowledge that God is our Father, first of all. He's not just like God of the universe way out there somewhere. He is God our Father who cares and loves about us. Secondly, we recognize that he's, he's holy. He's someone that we reverence. It's not just, hey, Dad which sometimes it's Abba, you know, in that sense, and we have those moments, but it's also like, whoa, I just come into your presence, and you begin to praise him and worship him. This is how we begin the process. We get into 
positioning ourselves to hear God's voice, we get into his presence. We read his word. You start by worshiping him. So let's just do that now. Let's just you and me pretend that it's you and me alone. And we're learning. And if you're a guy, then Pastor Bill and me and you, we're all sitting together. And you're learning how to hear God's voice. So we're gonna practice this. Forget about anybody around you. Don't worry about what you sound like, look like, anything. If you feel like "Mm, this is uncomfortable for me, try your best just to let that go and let, let down every guard that the enemy would try to put up to keep you from experiencing what God wants to do in you right now, okay? So I want you to begin to speak out loud. You can close your eyes. It's a little easier sometimes for us because when we're praying to God, sometimes people close their eyes. I can't, I'll fall down. So I I have to hold on to stuff. But you just pray and begin to say things that like to worship God, you name who he is, you thank him for things, you praise him in a way that lifts him up and glorifies him. And it's hard, sometimes we forget, like I don't even remember now that I'm starting to supposed to worship and praise you like who you are or what you've done. (laughs) Because we get weird in our thinking, we get stuck. So don't get stuck, just begin, and I'm gonna help you. So close your eyes and let's just pray. God, we worship you. You are almighty. You show up in everything. The creation resounds with singing about who you are, and the clouds are the dust of Jesus' feet, as it says in Revelation. You are so magnificent and awesome. You're faithful. You're my healer. You are good. I trust you. You're trustworthy. You're amazing. And God, we lift your name that is above every name in heaven and earth. You are not bound to any circumstances because you are everywhere. You are all powerful. You are all knowing. I worship you with my whole heart, my whole being. I'm so blessed by who you are and what you've given to me. You are my provider. You are my sustenance. You are my encourager. In you, I place my trust. Thank you, Lord. You get it? So for you, it might be like one thing. Thank you for today. This is the day the Lord has made. You can start there. That's okay. You just practice. The second one, Matthew 6, 10. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we submit ourselves to the Lord. This is number two. Submit yourself to God and lay down your own imagination. You die to your own imagination, your desires, your burdens, whatever you feel you should pray, lay it down before the Lord. And Proverbs 3, verses five through six says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So we want God's understanding. We want to understand what he wants us to pray, how he wants us to pray, not just what we think we should pray, right? And then Isaiah 55, eight says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So we acknowledge that we cannot pray without his direction, right? And then Romans 8, 26 says, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. That wordless groans is when heaven touches earth. That's when he comes into you and you just sense, whoa, the presence of God is so strong. And if you've never felt that, get ready. God wants you to experience that. He wants you to understand his ways. And his word is a light into our path and a a light, anyway, I mix it up, light and lamp to our path. I know the scriptures, they just get a little jumbled in my brain. But it's okay, God knows, and he wants you to just experience that, that he wants to lead you in righteousness. He wants you to, he wants to lead you to a place in his presence He's not asking if he can follow you around and bless what you do and protect you from stuff. He's asking if you'll follow him. Are you willing to do that? Let's do it together. So 
We lay down and submit ourselves to the Lord. So let's do it. Close your eyes and just do that. God, I submit myself to you. I don't know how to pray without your direction. I lay down my own thoughts, my own imagination, my own experience of what I think it is and how I should pray. But God, we want to pray as you want us to pray and how we ought to. Because without your spirit guiding us, we are nothing. We have nothing. So we submit ourselves to you now. And number three, make your requests known to God. So this is verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. So we ask God for stuff, right? We ask him to give us direction or ask him for healing or ask him for um, provision. So many things. And so I just want to read a couple of scriptures that are encouraging, which is um, Philippians 4, 6 or 7. It says, wait, skipping, sorry. Oh yeah, Philippians 4, 6, or 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Remember, you've just been worshiping him and thanking him. So now when you're asking him for something, if you're a parent and your kids are like, can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? And you're like, okay. You give it to them and they're like, rah, rah. And they just go and take it and never say thank you. You're like, next time nothing for you. (laughs) But you recognize it's like we can't come to him with selfishness. We come to him with thanksgiving in our hearts. We present our requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we're going to do this now. So if you have something to write on or you've got your note app in your phone or some way to write this down, I want you to take a moment and consider what your request is. What are you asking of God? And be very specific if you can. So let's just take a second. I'll give you a a minute and write out your request to God with thanksgiving. Remember that part. So number four, and you can continue to write, and we'll have all of these notes online as well because I just want to make sure that we are able to get through this today. (laughs) But... Number four is Matthew 6, 12. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We wanna have a pure heart before before God when we come to him. The Bible says that we cannot hear God's voice if there's sin in our hearts. Now, we just talked about last week how it is that Saul on the road to to Damascus heard God's voice and was completely, you know, the, the light shining around him. And he was a bad guy. He was a murderer. He was going after God's people and killing them. And so he had sin in his heart for sure, and he heard God. So it's not that the Bible is incongruent and is saying two different things. It's that God is doing anything he can to get your attention. And if he has to speak out loud to you because you have sin in your heart, he's coming after you to rescue you. He's coming after you, and he's willing to do anything to do that. He sent Jesus for us for that. And so, but as believers, when we are following Jesus, that can be a hindrance. If we know that we're supposed to be obeying God, but we're not listening and we are having sin in our hearts, and then we go to God and we just wonder like, how come you're not talking to me? Are you even there? What happened? And sometimes we need to stop and ask the Lord if he will reveal to us by his spirit what is keeping us from hearing him. Is there sin in my heart or unforgiveness? Is there something that is keeping me from hearing your voice? And so um, Psalm 51, and I think it's verse 10, says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. And so let's just do that now. Let's bow your heads And just ask the Lord, God, is there anything in my heart that would keep me from hearing your voice? Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your spirit. Renew a right spirit in me, Lord. Search me and know my thoughts, God, and know that you are God. We want to submit our lives to you. So we ask for forgiveness. We repent of all of our ways And if there's something specific that you know that you need to make right with the Lord, I encourage you to do that this week. If it's a text, if it's an email or a phone call, I encourage you to make those things right before the Lord. And this is not easy, but it's so crucial. It will set you free. If you release others as you have been released, 
Forgive others as God has forgiven you. It will open up your heart to hear God's voice. And so I told about a story how when I was in high school, you know, we would go through this with, with King's kids, and we would do this every time before we had um, a ministry opportunity. And so I remember one time a girl came up to me, and um, this was a time where we're supposed to make things right. Well, we're traveling together, some 30 kids, and there is always something between somebody that needs to be <laughs> forgiven, I'm sorry, uh, you know, because we're living together, and our parents aren't there. Imagine that, 30 kids, few adults, and like just amazing things happening. Actually, it was amazing. God was so incredible. But also, we're very young and, you know, growing emotionally as well. And so this girl came up to me and she said, Lisa, I just need to make this right with you because I've been very angry at you and also just really haven't liked you. And I thought we were good friends. <laughs> I was like, um, let's just hear from the Lord right now. <laughs> I was like getting really, really hurt while she's asking me forgiveness for something. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna need to ask forgiveness of you because now I'm really angry with you. <laughs> no, I didn't say that, but it was like, I, I learned in that moment because what she said while her intentions may or may not have been right, I kind of felt like it was a little manipulation for her to have an opportunity to tell me that she didn't like me and she was angry with me and also that she was jealous. And what am I supposed to do with that? Like, oh, it's okay, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, I, I took that and it was just like a little arrow, carried it with me for many years and felt like I'm not lovable and I make people mad and I'm not gonna, you know, cause I got the solo or whatever. It's just weird stuff that happens when you're, well, in high school, but also older. It just shows up in different forms, right? So when you go to someone, make sure that it's the right thing. Maybe that, I think with her, that needed to be done be between her and the Lord because it caused pain for me rather than releasing me or pain, right? You get it? So we wanna seek the Lord about our motives when we go to make something right. Another warning is that sometimes to go to someone who is not safe in an abusive friendship, relationship, very toxic relationship, to go to them could be dangerous for you. And so you submit that to the Lord, you wait on the Lord, and if he prompts you, first seek counsel of a godly person. First find out, you know, maybe I, I've already been with this person, I already tried to make things right. And Matthew 18 teaches us that if we've done that, then we bring someone with us. So you need someone who's a witness, who is a godly influence to take with you. And also sometimes, again, that's something you release between you and the Lord because it's not safe for you to go into an environment where it will then cause more pain and kick something up that the devil will use against you and others and create havoc. Does that make sense? And so you guard your heart, you protect your heart, you give the Lord space and opportunity. So that's just the warning on that. The next one, number five, guard your heart. And so Matthew 6, 13 says, lead us not into temptation. Proverbs 4, 23, which is what above all else ministries is founded on this scripture. Above all else, guard your heart for everything flows from it. All of the issues of life come from your heart. And so we wanna guard our heart. Matthew, um, uh, Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. Jeremiah 17, nine and 10 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. We cannot understand it. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. And so this is also, not only do we guard our heart, you know, against the enemy or things like that, we guard our heart against deception because now this is meditation, what you're doing here. This is meditating on the Lord. This is learning to hear his voice. And so you guard your heart. This is why sometimes meditation that is not founded on biblical principles is dangerous because you are letting go of everything and you're inviting the spirit to come in and speak to you. You want the spirit of God only to speak to you. When you empty your mind of everything and you come to a place of absolute surrender and peace and whatever, you must understand the power of that 
that you must bring Jesus into the center of that because you open your mind to so many other things if you don't. And so we guard our heart against deceit. We guard our hearts against lies of the enemy because you're now vulnerable, right? But we ask God now to come into this place. So um, number six, the spiritual authority over the devil. You have authority. There is a devil and that's not a word we like to say. It sounds like condemning and hell sounds bad. It's bad, people. It's real. The devil wants to get you there. He wants other people to go there, and he doesn't want you to know the power of hearing God's voice so that they can just go on their way, and you'll never tell them, or you'll never live a life that's any different from anybody else, but you go to church on Sunday. He wants you to learn to hear his voice and understand that you have power over the devil. The devil is seeking this earth for who he can destroy, right? You're not gonna be that person. So let's learn how to do that. Let me just read this scripture to you. It says, um, so we, we're going to take down and bind the enemy, take every thought captive that means our mind, our spirit, that every thought that comes into our mind, we're going to take that captive and come against any distraction, declare power over darkness through the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And in James 4, it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We think it's so hard to make the devil go because he's the big bad guy. No, he's not. He's loud, he's conniving, he tries to show up everywhere, but he's this strong. He just casts big shadows and makes a lot of noise. And so I love the scripture that says, when the spirit, or when, when, the, um, when, the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God will raise a standard against him. This scripture in Isaiah, I was, I was reading that and understanding it that when the enemy comes in like a flood, Right, He's just like so powerful, he just comes in like a flood. The Spirit of God will lift a standard against him. Well, Josh Shepherd came up to me and said that he had heard a Jewish rabbi who's speaking about this very scripture in the context of how it was written, and he said in the translation, they put the comma in the wrong place. It's when the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, the Spirit of God lifts a standard against him. Do you see the difference? I thought when the enemy comes in like a flood, like he's just drowning all of us, all powerful. No way. And then the spirit of God comes in and lifts a standard against him. What? Right? Isn't that what you think? Because it just feels like you're buried in stuff when the enemy comes against you. That's all you can think about, all you can feel. You're not meant to think about that and feel like that. It's when the enemy comes in Here's the enemy, he's coming in, he's being loud, he's like a gnat in your ear. If you have a gnat in your ear, have you ever had that? It's so loud, and it doesn't stop until you get rid of it. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of God lifts a standard against him, and he cannot stand, and he must flee in the name of Jesus. Let's practice it. Close your eyes. And so right now, God, we just come against anything the enemy has that he would try to be, bring distraction or deceit or lies or hurt or harm or, or deaf ears. God, we pray that your spirit would lift a standard like a flood that you would pour out and drown out anything the enemy has planned that would not allow us to fulfill your purposes. We actually submit our hearts and minds to you and take authority over the yes. enemy in Jesus' name that gives us that authority. Yes. Amen. 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 Good job. So then, number seven, we praise God in advance. You've already worshiped him. Now we're about to open our hearts to hear God's voice. So you begin to praise him. Let's just do it right now. God, thank you that you're going to speak. Thank you that you already speak to us, that you want us to learn your voice, to hear it so that we might obey it. So we just thank you in advance for what you're about to say. And then number, number seven, 
That, that was number seven. Number eight, we wait on the Lord in silent expectation. So number eight is such an important time. I think that we are very distracted people. My phone just showed up four notifications while I'm preaching. So good example. I'm telling you, you're doing a good job. Man. That's right. He's like, good job. Keep going. Time's up. It's one. <laughs> It's actually, last week I got a notification from Thomas, who is back on the pro presenter, and I didn't know he was back there. I was just about to call him out, but he was actually putting a notification up about me on Facebook that moment, so it was great. But so the point, the point is that we get distracted, like I just did. So why do we have to wait upon the Lord? This is the moment to be still. So your heart and mind is open. You put away all distractions. Make sure you're in a quiet place. You have your Bible with you and something to write with. I use my phone because I can't see a lot of times. God will need to heal that. But the thing is, is that you must be in a place to um, have the word of God because you don't want anything to come outside of being congruent with God's word. He might show you a picture of something. He might give you a word, like one word, or he might just say something to your spirit and the way that you know that is just like a thought comes into your head that you weren't thinking. Because remember, we've laid down our own thoughts and we've asked the Lord to put his thoughts into us, put his word, because our thoughts are not his thoughts. We know this. So in that moment, you write it down and you wait upon the Lord. Maybe he gives you a scripture. We were talking about how it is that when, you know, you're first learning, it's kind of like this. Oh, no, that is not from God for sure. (laughs) Let's go this way. Okay, well, that's okay. I don't really know what it means. So you begin to read around it. Let's get context. Ask the Lord. I remember, you know, going to, well, this happens many times where I'll get a scripture and praying about something and I won't really understand what that scripture means or how it relates But then I'll begin to read in context. And I read the verses before, the verses after. Pretty soon I've gone through a whole book. And that happens. And then it's like, oh, the revelation of God comes. And he's he's wanting you to understand the context so that he can speak to you how it relates to you right now. And what you're asking for, what you're hearing him say to you, and what you're to do with that. And so it's very important that you wait upon the Lord. Micah 7, 7 says, but as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. Say it again, Pastor Lisa. My God will hear me. Thank you, Mary. (laughs) Then Psalm 5, 3 says, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. Wait in faith. Don't wait like, (laughs) I hear nothing. It's not happening. Don't worry. He will speak. Just keep waiting. If I hear nothing and I'm sitting there in silence and getting frustrated like there, God does not hear me. He does not care and he's not speaking. No, that is a lie. I know that God will speak. So I close my stuff. I get up and I go about my day and I trust that I'm still waiting. I'm living my life, but I'm still waiting. And then somewhere, somehow, throughout that day or days, because sometimes I'm waiting on the Lord for a long time. I waited on the Lord for above all else for a year, a year and a half. I got that weird thing in your throat. A year and a half. But he spoke little things all the way along. And then it was like, a complete download of what I was supposed to do and how, right? And so you just wait patiently. And so then in, uh, so number nine is in faith, we write out what we heard the Lord saying. We write it out. And if you're in a group, this is a fun activity to actually do with other believers where you are hearing God's voice, you're positioning yourselves to hear God's voice about something specific and you're, sharing that with one another because that's why you've come together, what God says. And sometimes God might speak something that's actually just meant for you and not really meant for the group that it's, you know, for them. And so you, you learn discernment. 
of when to share those things and when not to share those things. And so also when the Lord speaks to you, he might say something very specific and very clear, and it might be for someone else, but you must know that the prompting of the Holy Spirit is very clear if you share it. Because if you share it outside of the prompting of the Holy Spirit and the timing is crucial, and maybe he just wants you to pray for them, because if we share it outside of that, we are vulnerable to pride. And sometimes we can share something without the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and it might even be the word of the Lord, but we're not meant to share it. We're meant to pray into that. We're meant to ponder that in our heart for ourselves or for someone else. And so when we step outside of that and we, we, can, we can actually step into sin and pride, and the reason it's so important that we begin to understand and, and know when God's prompting us is because then people begin to look to other people for hearing what God has to say. And so God uses other people and there will be times where he will absolutely bring a confirmation that was from the word of God through another person. It's just crucial that you know when to do that. And so I have at times done that prematurely and I went back to that person and say, I need to apologize. I was meant to pray for you not to share that yet. And I think my pride got in the way. And so you want for people to be drawn into the presence of the Lord. Whenever you share what God has spoken, it should just shine them right to Jesus. It should lead them right into the presence of the Lord. And it's like they will forget who said it, but they will know that God spoke to them. It's like in the Bible, I love the, the, and the prophet of the Lord came in and he spoke his word, and then this is what happened. Who? What prophet of the Lord? So we're not always meant to be known or seen or heard giving God's word, but the word of God is so crucial that once you do hear it, if he prompts you, you speak it and you move aside and let him do it. So it brings glory to him, amen? amen. And the last thing is we practice. Practice, practice, practice. You may not hear anything the very first time you do this because it's brand new. And so don't worry I still have times like that, and I've been living this as a lifestyle. To me, this is, and I'll forget. Sometimes I'll go in the presence of the Lord and just do my own thing and start asking for stuff and, you know, and, and, and not really entering into worship and not allowing him to make me open to hearing his voice, and I'll, I'll have to come back. Like, it could even be weeks of that. And then come back and go, oh, I'm not really entering into the presence of the Lord. I'm just asking for stuff right? And so you can never go wrong reading your Bible. If you're not getting it yet, go through what the steps are, and maybe the Lord will lead and guide you in different ways, but just read the Word of God and pray how good He is, how awesome He is, how great He is, and I guarantee you God will speak. I guarantee you, and if it doesn't happen, then I will sit down with you, and we will pray, and together we will hear God because he wants to speak. He's doing his best to communicate. He sent his only son, Jesus, so that we could personally have relationship with him and hear him and not have to do sacrifices ourselves and not have to hurt ourselves and do all these things to try to get God's attention. He's right here, right now, and he wants to speak to you. Please take this week and practice. Take every day, just try to go through the steps, get up a little bit earlier, and just ask the Lord to speak to you, and then write it down. And when this happens, when you experience God's voice, and you, it's confirmed in through the Word of God, it's confirmed somehow through another person or circumstance, please send me an email, lisa at capitallife.org or anyone at capitallife.org. It'll get to us. Just get on the website. It will find me. And the reason is that your testimony overcomes the devil. That's a promise in Revelation that the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb overcomes every wicked scheme of the enemy. And it propels righteousness into the air, into the spirit of what is happening everywhere that you go. And so I wanna hear your testimonies. I believe that God is 
ready to, he's already speaking, but he's ready for you to start listening to his voice. So let me pray for you. Let's ask God to do some miracles. Are you guys ready for that? If you catch this, and if we can do this in unity together and the enemy has no place in us and not in this church and not in the church, big C, we will see, we will see our Savior return, amen? Father, we thank you so much for everything, God, that you've given to us, that you want to speak to us, that you love us, that you know us, and that you hear us, you hear our prayers. So we pray, God, that you will open our hearts and ears, teach us your ways that we might obey. Teach us to wait, Lord. Teach us to wait actively upon you, and we will listen, and we will obey. We commit these things to Jesus.